it was a, a lot of a lot of circumstances that all kind of rolled into one and then you know my life had fallen apart um at the same time and that you know I was trying to even just figure out what I was going to do with my life let alone fighting even like career wise yeah. and stuff you mean just like oh, uh, just, outside of just everything in everything. life didn't know where I was going to be living yeah. didn't know yeah. what I was yeah like literally everything um like i didn't even know who my friends were anymore like i just oh yeah mm. i didn't have a support network like uh like life fell apart and yeah which is a very happened. relatable thing for a lot of people perhaps like yeah. you know i wouldn't say everybody but a lot of people have you know had that yeah at moment. some point where a, a lot of people will experience that kind of stuff and i was really really lost um for mm. a while there and as I said, I like I I didn't have the capacity to even like look after myself at at, at one point. So it was like, well, I I definitely can't fight. Like I'm not even training. I don't have a gym. But I pulled my shit together and uh, I went, yeah, I I want to have at least one more. Like I can't go out without having one. Um, you know, I can do this. Wait. So you went to Gamma with the idea that this might be no, just no, no, like the, the, the what? The, the, the fight before Gamma. Okay, the fight okay, at the okay. Beginning, yeah. uh, the beginning of of um twenty twenty two. Right. So because you didn't tell me that, gym. I'm like, hey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is what I I've always said, like you know, um, your biggest success comes after you've like literally feel like you're gonna walk away. So yeah. keep going. Um. Yeah. So yeah, then I had a a fight early twenty twenty two. And that was a big deal for me. And in there, I didn't want the fight to be over. I did not want a stoppage. Um, I just wanted to fight the full three rounds and I just wanted to take in every moment. I was so present and I had so much fun. And I literally went in this fight, I want to try and pull off <laughs> this whole list of things. I want to try and do this certain takedown. I want to try and do this certain combo. I want to try and do X, Y, Z. And I did. And that to me was also very big in building my confidence. Um, but like, I was like, yeah, cool. That was great. I did everything I wanted to do. Then I got the call up for Gamma and I was like, oh, wow. Um, okay. Yep. And then I, and I also got offered another fight, which was going to be a main event fight back in Australia just after Gamma. And I talked with my coach and we said yes to both because we're like, well, I can't. I can't not go to Gamma. I can't not represent my country. And if I get injured and I can't fight the other fight in Australia, so be it, you know. Um, so I went to Gamma, you know, for me it was just I want to go and experience this. For me the main thing was I want to go represent my country. I want to go raise that flag there. I want to, yeah. you know, uh, as I walk out, I, you know, I just – I want to just say that I have represented Australia. Like that's amazing. It's a me. huge and thing. I, yeah, it's a huge deal. Yeah, and Gamma is a little bit different to other amateur tournaments um, because Gamma is not actually an amateur tournament. It's actually a pro am tournament. Um, so it's just the best fighters. It's amateurs and professionals. You do compete under the modified rules, which is basically amateur rules, um, and you do wear the the shinies and the the bigger gloves and that's because it's a tournament so you're fighting potentially multiple times a day for a couple of days um so i went over there with a the goal of go over there represent australia have fun do your best um see how you go <laughs> and then and then i won um and you know i won my first fight against someone that is you know has a big following um they're touted to be like the next big thing in combat sports in general. They've had a lot of fights. At that point in time, I hadn't really had that many fights either. And all my fights were in MMA um, other than one uh, low-level mm -hmm. Muay Thai fight. Uh, other than that, and my first opponent had had like 30-plus fights, like including like development days and tournaments and all that kind of stuff. Um across all the different combat sports and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and I went out there and I finished her in the first round. Um, and I was like, yeah, hell yeah. And then 
when I come up to the the gold medal match, I was like, well, I've come all this way, you know, um, I'm going to give it everything I have. And like, <laughs> I didn't read it till after, but uh, the all the media that they'd put out was that this girl who'd won the Asian championships was going to run through the division and she was a favourite. Um, and also the, the media uh, for my first match was also that uh, my other my opponent was going to win um, because you know she was quite well known and, and the next big thing um, and yeah uh, going into the gold medal match too knowing that she'd won the Asian championships that she was a professional fighter and I'm here as an Ami um, and she was a fair way into her professional career too I think she'd already had four four pro fights and obviously right. she'd had an Ami career before that as well. And she was ranked number three uh, pound for pound in Asia, which was, you know, pretty big deal. Um, so as usual, odds are against me and I'm just like, I'm going to go out there and then. But not just um, that. You remember yeah. how sick you were? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I, actually haven't, <laughs> I actually haven't spoken about this um, sort of publicly before, but um yeah, so I was undersized when I was weighing in. Obviously, weight division was 65.8. I was around 63. <laughs> um, so I was weighing in in shorts, tracky, jumper, jacket, um, no probs still coming in under the weight. Um, and this girl had actually fought when she won the Asian Championships was actually the next weight division up too. So she was coming, she was coming down. Um, so and, yeah, yeah, I woke she up was 155? On, or like yeah, then. yeah. Well, that's You're what right. she competed at um, for okay. for the Asian Championships. But I think I think the featherweight was probably the right one for her. Yeah, I don't know if that's because of you know size or because she was big, um, or if maybe that's just where the competitors and opponents were or something. I'm I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, I woke up on fight day. For the gold medal match, so sick, so so sick. Oh man, um, I was so ill, and I was like, oh my god, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. My head was spinning. Um, like getting in the bus from the accommodation to um the stadium. Oh man, I felt so sick. With the pressure as well. Yeah. Oh, I didn't really feel pressure because I was the underdog, and the whole time I went out there just being like. I'm just going to do my best and have fun. I mean, I don't um, know how, like, if I had a pounding headache and was sick and knowing that someone was going to punch me in the face, that was, that, I think there's just the idea of that is what would make me nervous more than anything. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's fair. I guess that was one but of But she didn't have that? that? <laughs> um, yeah, look, I <laughs> kind of had to have a, like, internal chat with myself and I actually did during the fight too, um, about, you know, well, we, before the fight it was kind of like well you've come all this way like you you, you don't want to pull out like you you want to do it you've been in worse scenarios you've been hurt before you you know you've experienced hard times in your life this is no different who cares you know either way you've made it here so go out there and give it everything you have um and so you know even warming up and hitting the pads oh man my head was pounding my like every time I hit the pads it just made me feel sick but you know push through that and by the end of the sort of warm-up I was feeling like a little bit better in terms of like you've just taken that impact um so much in the warm-up that it's like okay well it's you know I already feel crap I feel as crap as I can so I'm not going to feel any crapper or any worse <laughs> when we get in there. So I've reached that mm -hmm. worst feeling part. You're so like, yeah. It was a three minute round. So it was like three minutes at a time. Probably you're thinking whatever, it's just three minutes and then three minutes and then, you know, Oh no, I was just like, well, <laughs> we're at the worst we can feel. It's gonna, it's not going to get, you know, any, it's not going to get worse. <laughs> it could get better. Um, we'll just go out there and, you know, don't, but what's interesting it. is like, we were doing the video. And it just like it wasn't it didn't show at all, and you were just happy. <laughs> I um, um, I disagree. My mum actually called me and messaged me and went, "Why are you so white? You look sick." Yeah, maybe you were um, white, but like well, just because the, the demeanor was more me, like 
yeah. mean, well, yeah, that that was just positive energy. It was like a laugh. Well, it that's was... it. I don't like to dwell on the on the negative. Um, like I felt like crap, but I was like, I'm here. I can't believe I'm here. I've made it to here. I'm the underdog. Like, oh yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. I felt like crap, but I was like, you know, you. When do you get this opportunity? So anyway, we go out there. Um, you know. The whole experience was amazing. Um, the first round to like the first round, um, we go out there, you know, we touch gloves um, and yeah, we, <laughs> we start fighting um, and I don't know, I just wasn't a hundred percent on yet. Like I was on, but I just did a couple of silly things and, and she come real hard and she hit me a couple of times. And in that moment, my head just went nuts. It went crazy. It spun. It was just horrendous. But in that moment, it was like time slowed down and and she hit hard and <laughs> I had to have a conversation with myself. And in that moment, I said to myself, you didn't come this far. You didn't travel halfway across the world. You didn't get through 2021 um, for nothing. And, um, yeah, in my head, I was like, go, like we're, we're not quitting because there was that moment where I was like, damn, I'm hurt. Like, like my head hurts. I don't know if I can do this for a split second. And I was like, no, you can absolutely do this. Pull your shit together. Um, and yeah, so I had that conversation in my head. You're like, literally it was. You didn't come this far to only get this far. So then I then I, mo- I obviously moved out of the way um, and then I just, I fought, I fought my ass off um, and I really tried to listen out for my coaches and what they were telling me um, and I, and I took it to her and then, uh, yeah, in between rounds, I was like making sure that I absorbed everything that those coaches said to me. And I went out there and did exactly what they, what they said to the point because, again, I was worried that I wasn't a coachable athlete um, to the point where <laughs> mid-fight they're saying, do this. And I was saying, yep. I was audibly saying, yep. While oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Or, yep or yes. Um, and so yeah. when I watch that back, I find that really, really funny. Um <laughs> And that, and like, <laughs> I think between one of those corn, uh, like in between rounds or something, they were like, "You don't need to answer us." Like, <laughs> you just keep doing. It. I was like, "Okay, sorry." It's like you don't um, know what I've been through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was more just like I was like, "Yep," because again, it, I was actively listening out for someone that I've never listened to before, so it wasn't, you mm-hmm. know, a normal like your coach who you hear all the time, you know. Um, so I had to like actively listen and do and trying to do it as quick as they're sort of saying it um so yeah I don't know why I was just like yep (laughs) even a little (laughs) head nod in in one of them um and then yeah I um ended up winning that fight as well by by stoppage as well um so it was was so dominant it was take down she couldn't get up you know like it's uh, and that's it, one thing I hadn't really explored in any of my fighting prior to that as well. I really hadn't explored the ground game, but in my head, um, because most of all my fights before that were all just stand up pretty much, um, mm-hmm. or getting back up or or whatever. Um, and in my mind, when I was thinking about going over there, I'm like, it's a tournament. The easiest way to not take damage, if you can, is to get them down but be on top. Um, mm-hmm. you know, and so you limit how much your, damage like, you're taking. <clears throat> okay, yeah, because you might because you knew you were going to fight multiple times, you know. Yeah. Yeah, potentially. I mean, so obviously, many people, it's a good uh, way to, to look for a finish too. But of course, yeah. I mean, like I'm saying, so many people pulled out of fights there because of injuries, because of the frequency of fighting. Uh, even the final. I mean, we know Kevin like fought with a cracked rib and couldn't finish his submissions because of that when you had them in and. Like that stuff always plays a factor. So, absolutely. Yeah. So in my mind, I was like, I obviously I want to win, I want to progress, but I want to do that. Like, I don't want to have a war. I don't want to be necessarily super entertaining. Um, I want to finish people at whatever opportunity I have to finish them, 
um, so that I don't take damage and I can keep fighting and I'm, you know, and that that's what I did. Like my first fight was a first round submission. That was also my, my first submission win because I never oh, that really. that was your first submission win? Yeah, yeah, because I'd never really explored the ground game. I like mean... I've done a lot of work on it in the last couple of years. Um, but, yeah, it wasn't until I, I moved from Cameron to Newcastle only a few years ago that I actually started doing the ground game really. Um, and <laughs> Yeah, so that was my first submission win. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, then uh, ground and pound uh, TKO uh, well, for, for the final. I'm going to be throwing all the footage in here, by the way. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> so, yeah, I, I mean, like, so there was a lot of things that that fight or that experience meant for me. Like, it was such a big thing to even be selected. It was such a big thing to represent my country it was such a big thing to even just be there for the experience travel travel as part of fighting um Mm -hmm. and everyone really got around me too um you know I did put up like sort of a fundraiser thing like a GoFundMe kind of page and stuff and and a lot of people did really get around that and then support me um in, in helping me sort of pay my way to get there um and then, yeah, it was a big deal for me because it was kind of like this huge achievement for me, for my country. Um, but knowing that I'd come out of the the worst year of my life, the circumstances, the it was a big win for me knowing that I could be coachable and coachable by people I've never like potentially met before. And I've yeah, known them for like a day or two, um, <laughs> you know, and that I can pull those things off without my own coach I can pull those things off without my own team you know I can I can do this I am good enough um and I need to believe in myself because I had completely lost any belief in myself um at all um and and that really helped me and it continues to help me when I whenever I am having low days and stuff is to look back and go no you deserve you know, this fight coming up, you deserve this opportunity. Look what you've done, look what you've faced um, and all of those things. And, and confidence in the fact that I I beat someone who is a professional fighter um, while I'm still amateur, um, you know? uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like there was just so, so many things. Um, And then under the circumstances on the day too, that I felt terrible. If I can pull that off on my worst day, Imagine what I'm capable of on my best day. And so it was so funny um, to to relay how sick I was because, um, again, I haven't actually spoken about this publicly before. Um, so have the fight, all good, um, you know, get out of the, out of the ring. Go and, to, like, the know, warm-up area. And, yeah, man, I was so sick. And then so how Gamma worked is they would do a section of fights, say, like, six fights or something and then then they'd have the medal ceremony for those six fights then they do another six fights or or however many it was and then a medal ceremony so obviously the people live streaming from all around the world don't have to wait you know an entire day um to to get to see their person or people get the medals mm-hmm. so i was kind of middle of that so i had to wait um for the or i think maybe there's one one more fight after me, one or two fights after me, and then medal ceremony. And, man, I, I felt so sick. I had to just sit down and sit so still after the initial, like, sort of, you know, yay, I've won, cool, awesome. And then um, I remember that. <laughs> it, comes, it comes to, like, medal ceremony time and they're like, okay, guys, we're, you know, getting you to line up in the order of the, the fights, um, the presentation of the medals. We're also getting you to like line up in the order that you walk on stage. Obviously, silver medal, gold medal, uh, bronze, and yep. And I had to. I was so sick. I had to ask them, okay, how much time do we have before we go on? And they're like, oh, about three minutes. And I was like, in okay, gamma terms, that was like twenty minutes, <laughs> probably. Yeah, okay. except on, except on, except actually for that, except for that. That's the first time ever it was three actual three yeah, minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I was like, okay, I'll be back one second. And obviously I told my partner, Jared, how sick I was feeling. He knew the whole day and whatever. And I've walked, walked 
pretty much out of where we're all standing and I've run around the corner and as I'm running around the corner, I've yelled to him, get a bucket. <laughs> He's grabbed a bucket because they were uh, like a stack of buckets, obviously for corner men to use and stuff to put their stuff in. Like, you know, this was a spare one. No one was, was using it. Um, and he's grabbed a bucket and I've run around be- behind like the next sort of bit and I'm just there on my hands and knees like I'm vomiting and I'm vomiting and I'm vomiting and I'm vomiting and then I'm like, okay, I think that's I think that's enough. I can go out there and get this medal now. Like you know when you feel so sick but after you vomit you get that little bit of relief like a, you just yeah. feel that little bit better straight after. Usually after a night out. Su- <laughs> <It's> like- <laughs> I was still super sick, but I was like, okay, I can actually get up there in the spotlight and, and get this medal. I feel like. And at least put better. on three smiles and then, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and then, you know, had a bit of water, switched my mouth out. Cool. And then I ran back and got into my line. And then within about a minute, minute and a half, we were, were going up on stage. Um, and like, it was such a surreal moment, um, that, you know, you block out how you're feeling in that moment because when the national anthem plays. Yeah. Yeah. When your national anthem plays because you've won and you've got that gold medal and, you know, all eyes are on you and the spotlights are on you, like as sick as you're feeling, you kind of forget it for a moment and you're just there living in the moment, big smiles, happy, like, oh my God did I just do that? Um, and it still doesn't even set in. It still feels surreal to me now. Like I it's still like, did I actually do that? Was that real? <laughs> um, yeah. And then as soon as we got the medals, uh, sung the national anthem, we hopped off, off stage. The, like one of my opponents wanted to get a quick photo and stuff. We did that. And I was like, yep, cool. Is everyone good? Can we go now? And they're like, yep. And then I ran out the back to like the back, not the main warm-up area, but the additional one where we'd sort of been um, the rest of the the time, like before you get called into the official warm-up room. Yeah. So we're just out the back of the stadium um, <laughs> and I've got the bucket and I'm on my hands and knees just vomiting into this bucket. That's when I walked in, I was like, what the again. hell's going on here? You're like, Yeah, yeah. So like I couldn't even sit there and do it. I had to like, I was, I was just so... I was so sick. So I'm on on my hands and knees vomiting into this bucket. And then, yeah, eventually I stopped vomiting. Um, And then I was like, I, because there was only two of us Aussies um, in the finals that day. And so I was sort of more in the morning around lunchtime, you know, mid morning and Kevin wasn't until the night time. Um, so there was like a good, I don't know, five hours, six hours or something in between when I fought and got my medal and stuff and when he was going to fight. So everybody else went back to the um, accommodation on the, the buses. And I was like, and I said to I said to my partner, Jared, I was like, I'm too sick. I cannot hop on a bus. Like I can't move. I had to like sit against the wall out there and just sit really, really still because my head was like spinning and I was just so sick. And um, so for the next five hours or so, however long it was, um, I, after I finished vomiting, I had like a nap or tried to have a sleep um, at the stadium because I was too sick to hop on the bus and go back to the accommodation. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't remember like what the hell I did then. Cause I ended up, still doing the last part and uh you know buying everyone beers and like us watching the rest of the finals oh, well i bought you a coke then i remember <laughs> i was like no nah, no yeah i think you and jared were chatting and stuff too because i was a, po- a portion of time where i was like sleeping on his like leg oh right yeah as well um i think you guys were chatting um i don't know because i was oh yeah we're looking at footage I, yeah, think. I was so sick yeah yeah that makes sense um I think you guys were transferring footage or something. Or that. Yeah, something. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. But, but yeah. Um, yeah. And then I just remember, um, like, I remember that shot you, you have of me um, after the fight when I'm sitting there and you're like, I want to get a shot of you with your medal. And I've got the medal around my neck and I'm like so <laughs> yeah. sick. And you're like, we'll just do a quick one. 
a smile. Just two seconds. I'm like, okay, uh, okay, I'll look happy. Woohoo! Yeah, I've got a medal. <laughs> your face after, which and people then, will never see because yeah, it's not on camera. It's like, it, yeah, <laughs> it literally just goes from smiles to like, oh god, uh, like just yeah. Um, but yeah, so I had a, a nap and and stuff um, there for a few hours, and then I was like, um, then I felt a fair bit better. I still wasn't, I still wasn't good. Um, but I felt better. I wasn't feeling like I was, you know, getting vertigo. And my head was spinning so much um, or pounding. Um, and I didn't feel like I was going to vomit anymore. So, and then the rest of Australia turned back up and all that for Kev's fight. And, and I was like, no, I need to go watch Kev fight. Like I need to be there. Um, yeah. And so we went out there and obviously watched him and all of that kind of stuff too. So, you know, um, that was great. And then I was, you know, well enough to hang out with, with everyone and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, on, on fight day itself for the gold medal, man, I was so sick. There my, it's, yeah. it's, it's like, it says, um, it's like pressure turn, uh, turns what? Pressure, pressure makes diamonds. It, yeah, pressure. It's just pressure makes diamonds. Yeah, I'm like, why does it? Is it like pressure <laughs> turns something into diamonds? No, <laughs> pressure makes diamonds. Yeah, so it's yeah. like you're almost like, um, you're like, okay, the worst case scenario has happened, and that sort of elevates you in a way because you're like, uh, it can't get worse, so yeah, it takes the pressure yeah. off in a way, and it keeps you sharp also because you're like oh let me be extra protective of my head because i don't want to get punched in the head now <laughs> yeah i don't pounding. know i don't know if i did that um i think it was more like you already feel like crap you're already hurt like hurting okay, not yeah. hurt like it can't get any worse so go out there and just throw the kitchen sink at her like oh, just yeah. do anything and everything um just you know can't get any worse um mm -hmm. Yeah, right down on that and, gum shield from the first second. <laughs> yeah, and I guess yeah. the hardest thing was trying to concentrate initially, um, because like your head's pounding and and spinning and that kind of stuff. Um, but then that was it. Like I did have to like concentrate really hard and focus, and that's why I was trying to focus on other things, not focusing on how you're feeling. Once you're in there and the fight starts, you have to be 100% focused on the fight and focusing on what your corner is saying and and all of that kind of stuff. So you kind of you don't forget about it, but you don't placebo. focus on it when you're in there. Like obviously, when I got hit at the start, I was like, man, I feel like crap that hurt more than it should have um but then you have that that little conversation with yourself and you're like let's go um and yeah i guess you don't really focus on it you're yeah like, it is what it is it's that placebo effect i feel like in a way yeah so it it's really like gives when... you that kind of confidence going into anything else and and what you can what you're going to face in any other fight is that even on your like on days where you're not doing as well it's not ideal circumstances you can push mm -hmm. through like you can do it like trust in yourself and i i had to do that later in the year um like i took a fight and i <laughs> coming off of shoulder injury um a rematch and oh, virtually didn't have a shoulder like it was it was bad um mm. you know probably shouldn't have taken that fight but I did anyway. I wanted to fight. I wanted the experience, the exposure. I wanted to fight on that show. But that's what you're like, again. Where you go who back? Who cares? To, that's what I don't care if I lose. For. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I obviously that's... care, but yeah. like I still take, still took away a lot more by having that fight. Um, than what I would have if I had to said no. I'm too injured. So. Yeah, this is what I was saying just now about, like, uh, that's what your amateur career is sort of for, you know, like, see, like, test yourself to the limits, kind of, like, without uh, severe consequences necessarily, you know, like, towards your record or towards, you know, people's assessment of you in a way, 